Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Rise. And today I have a wonderful guest here with me, and he is a number one bestseller of two books, right? They both made it on the bestsellers list. Yes. Judgment of the Nephilim and the final Nephilim. He is also an attorney and he is also a theologist that is uh, studying in the Bible and Hebrew as well. Correct. Absolutely. Yes. Did I miss anything? <laughs> that That's great. Yeah. So okay. I'm also a uh, father uh, of two wonderful children, husband to oh, an yes. amazing wife. Yes. He's a uh, son of a very very, very serious Bible faring mother. <laughs> ah, the most that's the most important things right there. Family is the most important part. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And I'm excited to talk to you because I I did go through and I have maybe some out of the box questions that maybe you haven't been asked before, too. Hopefully. Great. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> I'm, I'm also, excited. Yeah. Anything else that you want to like tell me too that um you can jump right in and you know, if you have any upcoming things that you're working on or anything exciting coming uh, everyone's way. Yes. So, yes, lots of things coming along. So uh, for those who do already uh, know me and follow me, you know, I've been kind of quiet for the past few months because I've just been very busy uh, with my day job. I wish I could be a full time author, but that God hasn't allowed that to happen yet. <laughs> um, so I've been very, very busy with my day job. but I've, I have a lot of new projects coming in 2024. So I actually already finished my most recent documentary. So, uh, which is the end times Nephilim deception. Amazing. And it is an expose. It's different from my other documentaries that I've done before. This is totally different for me. So it's an expose and it's really focused on the books, the movies, comic books, video games that are targeted at our young adults, at our teens, at our children that talk about Genesis 6, the Nephilim, fallen angels, but it twists everything. They twist everything. They, they make the Nephilim the heroes, even the saviors of humanity. They make the fallen angels sympathetic figures, and they blaspheme the Lord Jesus, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ repeatedly. And there's a lot of this content. So this, this goes deep into all of that. So that's done. That is done. And that will be available uh, next month in December. In Amazing. December. It, it is, Quick. As we say, yes. Done, done. And so, yeah, so it'll be available uh, in Vimeo on demand on my on my Vimeo page, as well as in DVD. And then uh, I'm also very excited. I got my manuscript copy of uh, Judgment of the Nephilim in Spanish. And so I've had so many people over the years reach out to me and ask me, can you make a Spanish version? So it's done in Spanish by a Christian translator. He's done an amazing job. It's going to have some special things in there. You know, I like to always give bonus content. So it's going to have a bonus content with me even speaking a little Spanish myself on video. Um, it's going to have bonus video content in it. So that's coming out as well. And then uh, in... Uh, that's also that will be the start of 2024, and then in 2024, I have a lot of stuff coming up. So I have a children's book series. I'm focused on the kids. So um, I have Praise a children's God. book Praise series. Praise God for out. all gonna, this. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you know, I was a, I was, um, and this is something a lot of people don't know. I was a youth leader at my church in New York for 10 years. I worked with kids and teens before I had kids, and I feel like it was a blessing because God was preparing me to be a parent. So I've always had a heart for children and. The the book series is going to really, it's their children's, obviously, Bible books. They're going through the basic stories of the Bible, but really teaching it, I think, in a, in a way that's much more accurate to what God wants, right? it's it, The focus is, even if you're learning about Adam and Eve, you're learning about Noah's Ark, it's all about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So it's going to teach the Bible by understanding types and shadows, typology, how God uses repetition, and finding Jesus in all of these stories. And I think that's the really the powerful way so that children understand that these stories aren't just moral stories or Aesop's fables to teach us how to behave. It's to teach us the gospel and everything. And so that's coming out. And then my next book for adults, my next theological book, um, I'm uh, pretty sure I've already started the research on it. I've had tons of research on it for years, and I'm, I feel like God has really moved me in this direction, is to write a book on uh, on the gap theory, on the ancient earth, the pre-Adamite earth, and kind of all the research. There's a lot of amazing content from centuries going by. You know, uh, I'm, I'm sure you know I like to quote a lot of old 
old school theologians yes. from the 1700s, 1800s, the church father. There's so much stuff out there that it's going to blow people away. So I, I, I'm really uh, pretty sure that's going to be my next book coming out in 2024 to really explore. Wow. That. You have been busy. No wonder you're yeah. quiet. <laughs> I, I actually want to say about your children's series, this is really important because um, as a kid, mm. I didn't have, I mean, my parents made sure I went with the neighbors, but they weren't really involved and they were LDS. But the one thing that I ended up getting when I was little is a door-to-door -door salesman selling these little kid Bibles. They like had a whole bunch of them. I think they may have been like a Jehovah's witness type situation, but I don't know for sure. Whole yeah. bunch of them. Like there was 20 or 30 books and I flew through them and you know what? It helped me. I feel like it really built a foundation later in my life where if it had just been LDS theology, I, I probably wouldn't have learned as much as I did. So it was, yeah, nice. well, you know, that's God, right? God already <laughs> right. planted the seeds early on. Right. So it's, so awesome. it's so important that you're doing yes. that. because a Absolutely. Absolutely. There's not enough things like that right now. <laughs> no. And, and, and also, and then teaching again, that, you know, I've looked at so many children's Bible books and I think that we're missing an important element of how we teach the Bible. And that's how I've always taught the Bible. Like I've been a Sunday school teacher and I always make my own lessons. Like, and, you know, I, I don't buy lessons. I, I make them type my own. And um, and I make it very hard, by the way. So shout out to all my <laughs> students. <Yay. laughs> we had to endure my Sunday They're school lessons. I make, I make them really, really difficult. But it's important to teach, you know, really teach the Bible. God, we are children to God, right? God gives us pictures. It's important. And I was in the final definitely when I start off talking about this, that the, how everything, you know, this type of this concept of quantum repetition of things are repeating. God gives us pictures, whether we're looking at David being a foreshadow of Jesus, Joseph, Moses, he, he showing us pictures to not just understand his will, but to actually understand the future, right? Because it's informing us about prophecy. So there's no reason why we can't teach kids these things from elementary school. And they're ready to believe. They already believe in the supernatural anyway. So we might as well just oh, teach yeah. them the truth about it, right? From the, so I'm going to make, so these books are going to have angels and fallen angels and Nephilim in them. So they, you know, so yes. it's going to have all these things that we talk about. There's no reason that kids can't learn this and learn the real story, right? Of Noah's Ark. I was very a, young. Yes. I was very yeah. young when I read those books, um, under 12, I would yeah. have been like maybe fourth grade and it, it really did help me. And I mean, we have all these other books about archons and different things and they twist it. So why not let them know the truth? I mean, exactly. exactly. That's how I feel. So that's amazing. I am so happy to hear about all these things coming our way and one very soon, December. So that's, yes, yes, that's amazing. Yes. That's great. I can't wait to see that. Actually, it's coming. It's coming. I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for that. So uh, on all of the things that you have heard over the years, speaking of children, I'll, I'll open with this one um, because I've been going kind of speaking of old world into a little bit of a deep dive into kind of some Tartaria things where I'm looking at the orphan trains, the incubator babies, all this stuff that kind of happened in America where you have to step back and go, what exactly was going on there? Like that was really odd. And so yeah. I wonder, and I was going to ask you, one of the things I was wondering is, do you think in that, in that time period, they may have messed with genetics in a, in a possible way to integrate Nephilim bloodlines? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. So I, I think so much, right. So if you look at the Tower of Babel, right? That's a really important account. And I think, and I think it informs us a lot about society today, right? So you have, of course, this one world government being formed in Babel and Nimrod leading this construction. They said they want to build, you know, a tower to, to heaven, to reach heaven. And I think, you know, they were trying to really, it wasn't much, it was much more than a tower. They were really trying to open a portal to the spirit realm. Right. To bring back the days of Noah, bring back the fallen angels, the Benai Ha Elohim of Genesis 6, right? And all their secret knowledge and that whole era, right? The demigods and the gods and bring them back. And so much of what you see in modern times, modern meaning the last 300 years, right? In terms of the occult and secret societies, it's really the same exact goal. It's about trying to bring back 
the God to trying to open up the spirit realm in any way possible, right? And so we think about the genetic manipulation of the of the at that time. It's the same idea, right? It's it's trying to bring back the age of the Nephilim and not to mention the fact that Daniel too prophesied that's going to happen, right? We were told specifically that they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So there's going to be these efforts to bring back this era, right? Even Francis Bacon, the new Atlantis, right? I talk about the Nephilim, how Atlantis is the, the pre-flood world. It is the antediluvian world. And here's Francis Bacon coming along and saying, saying we want to create an, a new one, right? So they've had this idea among those who are, you know, for lack of a better term, initiates, right? They are aware of these things. And this is what they've been trying to usher and, and bring back for centuries. Absolutely. I, I always look at when, because the whole thing with Joseph Smith led me down another rabbit hole. And I do a lot of research into the occult because I was a Mormon. I don't know that I right. would have had I not been a Mormon, but that's what happened. So I go back to John D and I see some exactly. of these people that the new world order was, he was one that was trying to usher that whole idea in who was said that was brought to him by angels and, and that they wanted completely. Yes. One religion, yeah. one world, a new world. They started this world. I don't believe in the stories that they say how things were. I think that there was a reset. I feel like they wiped a lot of things and, and it's, it's shown in, and this kind of leads into my next little part is it's shown not just with him, but it's shown with Crowley. Crowley said it was an alien, not an, yeah, an am, angel, but he yeah. wouldn't have accepted an, right. an angel. I mean, exactly. Yeah. And so I think it comes to what, you know, whatever he or you would accept. And then Joseph Smith, I feel like this, this same thing happened with him and many people just throw his stuff out as he was just a plagiarist. He lied. And I'm like, I don't know because John D and him have a real similar story. And yeah. so that's what led I, me into I, that. Yeah, I, I think Joseph Smith definitely had a real supernatural encounter. And like Muhammad as well, by the way. Absolutely. Um, very similar, right? Scientology. And so when you look at John Muhammad. D, when you look at John D, and he clearly was communicating with the spirit realm, right? He, a high level occultist. Yes. And the idea of communicating with the angel, with the fallen angelic realm. So I you know, again, uh, talk about Tubal Cain, right? And the family of Lamech in Genesis chapter four, and they being the, what I call the first family of the Nephilim, who they were the family who the fallen angels approached. And I, went, and I, and I talk about how the Bible gives these details about Lamech and his sons, where they had this technological explosion. They discover all this technology. Uh, Jabal is the father of animal husbandry and tent making. Jubal is the father of instruments, which is really crazy to think about. That, that he invented music, the musical instruments. And then Tubal came was the first blacksmith metal artificer. And so John D, of course, you know, he had his signature as 007, right? Mm -hmm. That he, but he the way he wrote it, whereas the seven was on its side, and the and the the, the O's were kind of underneath this sideways seven. That was also. A pictogram of two ball cane, two balls and a cane. Oh. So it was also symbolizing. So even he understood this connection between two ball cane, the fallen angels, and esoteric knowledge, right? The knowledge of the of the of the spirit realm. And so, yeah, so definite connection. Well, and These the signs. Are all, yeah. it's, 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 they're <clears throat> all again, it's all the same goal to get back to this era of the days of yes. Noah. And I, I think that, well, the whole thing that led me down that is I found some sigils um, that were written by, they said it wasn't Joseph Smith, but his brother, but, but he was the seer. They were in his brother's uh, possession, but they were all dead at this point. And, you know, they, he died with a Jupiter talisman on, he had these sigils. There was a lot of things that ha I've never seen as a Mormon. And actually I've never seen other people delve into. So when I put this sigil into a reverse lookup, the one thing that came up was this little angel sigil at the bottom. Now I know that I didn't know what it was then. It was like a hieroglyphic weird thing. And it, it said the angel was Jubila dance, which is very interesting knowing 
that you're talking about the music and, dan- you know, dance goes together. And this Absolutely. was the calling of this angel. And the only other person that had ever mentioned it ever was John D. And I didn't know who he was. Oh, wow. So I went yeah. down, down, and there I was. But I, I don't think the temple was built by Mormons. I think the temple was there. I don't think, you know, I think a lot of things were already here and that right. we came through. And, and that leads me into the next thing that I was going to talk about is that I feel like the whitening of America um, and the wiping out of the Native American races was because they had oral history and oral tradition, and they were passing on these stories of these giants because there are actual accounts. Sure. And I only wrote a couple down because you could go f- forever on the Native Americans. Yes, yes, they yeah. they don't forget. Um, and the Choctaw say that they've seen the giants Nahalu in uh, the Ohio Valley, the Paiute in Lovelock, Nevada. The Navajo, the Starnock, they call them. They were miners that settled the West. Uh, the Comanche, they were in Tennessee and actually spoke about them being cannibals and really violent. But some of them weren't. They were told like some were really primitive and and cannibalistic like that. But others were really advanced, you know, and doing these other sure. things. And or so, both, right? Uh, yeah. And these yeah. are just, I mean, e- almost every tribe had one like a different yeah. name. Yeah. And I felt like that might have been part of the reason why they wanted to get rid of them because suppress it. Yeah. To suppress they... it. Right. 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 I mean, think about it. Right. It's Romans one, right? The wrath of God is revealed from heaven, right? Against all unrighteousness and wickedness. Who suppressed the truth, right? It's about people who are trying actively to hide the truth from others. Right. And so even as you said that, you know, I, you know, about these, these accounts uh, from the Native Americans, it's amazing how, you know, it's almost, it's, it's so similar to Genesis 14, where Abraham, they describe all the different type of tribes of giants, right? They said, they are the the Emims, the Anakims, the Zamzamis, but some call them Zuzims, right? You said how they said they have different names, but it's all, it's all the same account, right? It's all coming back to giants being here. And even the idea of cannibalism, right? Think about it. And this is the beauty of the details of the Bible is that after the flood, right? In the pre-flood world, right? I think, you know, the vegetation was very different. I think, you know, you know, animals were at peace with humanity. There was vegetation. Adam, Adam and Eve were just eating vegetables. Basically, there wasn't all this, uh, the, carni- the carnivorous diet that we have now, right? But of course, animals were put in submission to Noah after the flood. He was given dominion over them. But is, it was very interesting that God... One of the first commandments that God gives Noah after the flood is don't drink blood, right? Like why, why is that the first thing God's talking about? Cause I think there was lots of blood drinking and yes. flesh eating, eating human beings, right? The, uh, in numbers 13, the three spies, the 10 spies, we see the three sons of Anak in the, when they're scouting the promised land, they said, this is a land that eateth the inhabitants up right so i think that i again that that's what the nephilim were doing that they were literally eating human beings um so it's no surprise that the native american accounts of the nephilim say the same thing yep and they talk about how white they were that they looked very european or red hair or different Mm -hmm. you know attributes and i mean you can't wipe it all out this is, no. you know, this is silly. And I also don't believe their story that African-American people were brought over. I think a lot of them were here. I don't believe a lot of their stories. <laughs> I just yeah, don't. I mean, you can just write. So, yeah, n- another perfect example. So you have um, the Olmecs, right, in Mexico who have these busts that are, you know, 10, 12 feet high busts. And the, the people are clearly... African, African, yes. whatever yes. you want, whether they're whatever, whatever yep. country, their feature is unquestionably. Right. And this is obviously, you know, predating uh, Columbus coming to North America. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. And then there are other and, and, and then that's the thing, too, is that there's a lot of things that we discount in in African culture and history that we're just not even you know, it's just not even referenced or told, right? So in the, in their own accounts, they'll talk about Abakari II, who was the first king to sail to America, 
you know, again, this is talking about 1000 AD that he was sailing there and coming back and going back and forth and that there were, there were all these commercial um, passages that were taking place. And so, so yes, there's a lot of history there as well. In addition to when you look at, you know, certain areas like uh, in Nigeria, the Igbo tribe, right? You have the Lembas in South Africa, where they have all these Hebrew ritual traditions in their culture they say go back centuries and centuries so even even that idea that the that they that part of the uh diaspora of the israelites went to these places i mean the lemma are all the way in south africa and yet they are practicing the feasts and rituals it's crazy you know and like and they's like like how did they know that yeah for centuries exactly <laughs> yeah and they've been doing it for centuries so a lot of this stuff is suppressed unfortunately um in well, as and and on the orphan trains, which the orphan trains are concerning in themselves, but also the incubator babies. I mean, that one even is a, a further step up for me because uh, as a nurse, I know what they could do to manipulate things, but they yeah. wouldn't do it unless they were all the way. It was the whitening of America. And exactly. I, I, I right. feel like they were trying to emulate possibly this is just my own conjecture that they were trying to emulate these nephilim because they were white you know and then i i look at the mormons and they mention okay they can be more white and delightsome these are their quotes these are not my quotes these are yeah. their their books um if they will do this and that and i'm and they really pushed not marrying they really pushed racism i yeah. i mean it was always Absolutely. shocking yeah. to me it was like yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. well why a curse right to have dark skin yes. yeah. yeah sure yes. So it was always confusing to me, but I, now that I know certain things, I'm like, oh, maybe this is why, like part of this whole angel, like how they want to, you know, copy, emulate, be like, you know, these. Exactly. These yeah. yeah and, so. and, and to a certain, to a certain extent, right. We are all to a certain extent under some level of spiritual influence. I pray constantly for God. Like right. when people ask me, uh, you know, I wrote Judge by the Nephilim. Mm -hmm which took me almost three years to write, right? I was doing tons of research and trying to figure out how do I want to, the research, I was probably researching the book for over a year before I really wrote anything. So every night I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. And, you know, so many people when the book was published said, hey, you know, you put things in this book I've never read anywhere else. Like, where did you, even my own pastor, he said, where'd you get this from? I said, pastor, I said, you, I, you know, I'm every night I'm just researching. Yes. I'm not getting it from anywhere. But I said, it's God. I said, it's all God. There were so many nights where, because I wrote most of my, when I wrote my first book, my children were still almost like babies. They were like four years old and two years old. They were very, very young. So I couldn't do any writing during the day or in the <laughs> evening. I, cause I, I can't write with noise. I, I need quiet. I don't, I can't write to music, anything. I write in silence. And so um, most of Judgment of the Nephilim was written between the hours of 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. Oh, and, and so many nights, it would be two in the morning, and I would literally be on my knees in, praying and in tears. And like God revealed something to me that I didn't know. And so, so you know, so you, you, and that's what the Spirit does, right? Jesus said the Spirit will lead you in all truth. So the Spirit of God is literally teaching us things is and leading us and inspiring us even the word inspiration has spirit in it well it goes both ways right satan is also inspiring his children right so they're not just getting this out of thin air they're getting it from spiritual from wicked evil spiritual influence from evil spiritual uh teachings right even even paul saying you know because sometimes we sometimes we just throw things that the bible says out and we <laughs> understand what it says everyone understands it, but we don't but are we really thinking about it right when it says that in, in timothy that in, in the latter days some shall depart from the faith and follow doctrines of demons right think about that term it says doctrine yes it doesn't say well, you're just gonna follow a demon like they're they have a teaching like that's like a doctrine is like i have a chapter i want to share with you of a teaching that's a powerful statement that means they're they're just going to work they're putting together like a curriculum 
to infect and infest the minds and lead people astray. So well, be- because in the end days, we will fall for a great deception and the church will help us get there. So it's, it's sad, but true. Sad, but true. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes definitely. And that that goes right into um kind of like nowadays, I feel like, and I, I don't know how you feel. This is why I'm going to ask you, but I feel like they're really pushing the agenda forward to make us feel like we're in the end times. And, and like, I feel like they're prepping it so that they can put in project blue beam and it will be like, Oh, okay. Because I've seen all these rivers changing colors and different things, but they're, everything's out of order. There's nothing happening the way God says it's just happening. And so if you're not paying attention or you don't read enough or whatever the case may be, or you're new to it, you could easily be led astray and say, Oh my gosh, like this is real. This is happening. And so I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, No, definitely. The church can, will play a huge role in that. And you, we've seen, I mean, it's since 2020, you know, the power of the church to influence people and get people to really believe all sorts of things, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's getting more and more intense, which makes sense because, you know, again, as we approach the end time, the thing that's going to increase first, if you go to Matthew 24 is deception, right? That's what Jesus said to his disciples, take heed, no man deceive you. What is the sign of the end of the world and of thy coming, right? Jesus said, take heed, no man deceive. So deception is going to come first and then everything else. And so I always have to tell people to, to pump the brakes when they say, oh, this is it. We're in the great tribulation. <laughs> we just started. You know, I was actually in Norman, Oklahoma for the Prophecy Watchers Conference, speaking at the Prophecy Watchers imminent return conference the night that the most recent intifada broke out in Israel. So imagine the next morning. You know, Saturday <laughs> morning, I mean, everyone is going nuts. Old everyone, yeah. you know, it was a thousand people at this conference. And all oh my about gosh. Them, this is it. This is it. You know, when the war started in Israel. This is happening. And so, on one hand, that energy is amazing, right? We need to be looking and watching, right? The Revelation 16 says, Blessed is he that watcheth, right? So we're supposed to keep our eyes for the return of our Savior. We're supposed to be understanding prophecy. However, we have to stick to what the Bible says yes. and stick to the order. Like you said, that God has an order in everything, including end time prophecy, including all the unfolding of events of the end times. And so yes, the church um, or at least the pseudo church, I think can and yeah. will play a role in getting people this in deceiving in deceiving yes. people. And and to help them believe like in blue beam with the whole AI part, like I think they're just setting the stage. I think they're just trying to see like, oh, is this going to work? And they're just chucking things like, oh, let's see what's going to happen with this. And let's see what's going to happen with that. And let's stir a little pot over here. And let's, you know, even the weather, I I try to explain this to my mom. She's like, yeah, but then there's this earthquake and da, 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 and all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, but they they manipulate the weather and the weather, it it all affects everything. Like if it Mm -hmm. rains too much and there's too much water in the ground and, and, shifts and I, i'm like trying to explain that to her because she she, she got real nervous i mean i was nervous <laughs> i was like okay hold on let's just look at this you know and i said that there's not enough things done like it's not it's not how it should be and mm-hmm. i mean with the calendar changes with the dates mixed up we have really no idea on dates so you can't even go by that either so you have to just be wise and and not panic i feel like you have to really watch for the things that are going to come at us because the capability is wild at this point it, it, it is and we and we were just scratching the surface right i mean because even you think about um you know things like harp or the ability to project something into the sky right that to me is I always say the sky doesn't lie, right? When people, if people see anything in the sky, it will, it, it immediately is reality to them. And it, and that can be manipulated, right? That oh, can for be sure. manipulated, right? And so, so right now, this is all <laughs> the, the, the preparation, right? Because we have to be conditioned, right? It, it, it's, it's no different than what happened in the gospels. Jesus said, pick 70 people and said, go out 
and start preaching, start planting the seeds, start preparing John the Baptist. It's, there's always a preparation before the arrival. And so it's, there's, and that's what's going to happen. We have the preparation for Christ and the preparation for Antichrist. And so the, the technology now is really at the point where it can we can have mass deception on a huge, huge international scale. Yes. Any and day they, now. Any they day. They've perfected can this. They've they yeah. they do these things in like China with the dragon that came down on the sky. Yeah. And they yeah. did it in somewhere, I think Brazil. Um, and they are I think they're just playing with people right now to see it what happens. But They've had, the problem is not enough Christians. Now, Christians will study the Bible and Christians will study a lot of things, but Christians don't like to get into the darker part of things. And here's the problem. The darker side, like John D. Blavatsky flat admitted in her books about giants, like yeah. all these people, Speaks you know, very frequently, it's a yes, name actually. Yeah. 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 yeah they mm -hmm. talk about this yeah. stuff and I'm like, okay. Yeah. You have all these people and things pushing this agenda because they have mystery schools. They have this technology. They know things far beyond what we know. Like it's, it's way higher. And I always go back to King James and the Bible situation, but he didn't just have that done. He wrote, he had three books on demonology written at the same time, demonologia, and people miss that. And it, it's, it's a hierarchy. It's, it's an explanation. It's all these things. But then people will say, well, that's demonic. That's scary. Or that's, that's demons. We don't talk about that. And I'm like, as above, so below, everything has an order. You know, there's, yeah. there's order in all of this and there's power in all of it. If you believe the angels watch out for you, then you have to know that, you know, what, what does the Bible tell us about the opposite side of that? that familiar spirits will know you because they also exactly. follow you your whole life. Exactly. You know, yeah. they, they know everything. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and even again, like, you know, Ephesians six twelve, we wrestle now with flesh and blood, but with the principalities and powers. Right. So we yes. know that, right. Spiritual wickedness in high places, but the term again, it says wrestle wrestling. Somebody is close combat right that is that yes. means they're, they're gonna shoot you which you can do from wow. 500 yards away that means they are all up on you right and they want to grasp you and hold on to you like that is what wrestling is you know and so when you think about it from that standpoint how could you not understand your enemy right the mandate is to definitely understand your enemy right it says yes. we need to be aware of the devil's devices that means we've studied them, we understand his tactics, and we can resist them. Yes. So if you're not doing that, if you're not studying how, there's no way you can resist I'm, them. You're not even aware of what he's trying they, to uh, do yeah, to you. Especially when they're like, that doesn't even exist. That one gets me the worst. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. How do you discount if you're a true believer? Now, if you're not a believer, okay, then. But I mean, that's foolish, but I get it. You know, I mean, you want to say it doesn't exist either way. That's on you. That's scary to me. But if you can believe in one and not the other, that's a dangerous slope. You know, that's exactly. that's frightening exactly. to me. And then what is yeah. God saving us from? If there's no exactly. danger, what are we being no. saved from? <laughs> yeah. Right? So, yeah, exactly. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and the church is, you know, and this is why, you know, God calling you into this service, um, like you called me, like you called Josh Monday, Derek Gilbert, yes. L.A. Marzulli is so important because we know that the majority overwhelming majority of churches are never going to touch these things so um but god has given us this ability like we were talking about earlier that we can now reach people right. we can podcast we can vlog and we can reach people not just in america all over the world so it's like you know the corporate church is getting weaker but the true church which is just believers who are committed to serving Jesus Christ and sharing his word and not just the gospel right the whole thing the meat the milk the bones everything right the full counsel of god we're stronger because god has given us this blessing to live in this time where we can reach people everywhere in the world right now and so so it's it's so important it's so important that that well, we that we speak on these things i don't know about la I don't know about Gary Wayne. I know for me and you, cause I heard your story and you were super busy and like you were 
in another country with your friends and stuff and like going to school and, and this hit you, this hit me yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. I'm a mom <laughs> of a whole bunch of kids, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, it's not like any of us go like, yeah, we're going to go do this today. Josh was exactly. like going to be a rap star. Like this doesn't yeah, right. co cohesiveness <laughs> with that is not going to work. Right. And yeah. he had yeah. to change his whole trajectory. And as we all did. And so it's not like we're at home just like, oh, I'm going to do this tomorrow. Like this, this comes from somewhere and, and Definitely. two or more in his name is church. That Amen. That's church. And I, I try to tell people so much, especially Mormons that leave, leave because they feel like the temple, that's where God lives. The, the, right. you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, no, none of that. I mean, you can just throw it out, start again, learn about Christ, exactly. learn about your heart, learn about, learn to pray. And when, and when I say pray, when it says pray always and do not cease, I mean, like that's in your mind all day. Like you, you should have a constant thing with God there. Definitely. I don't know about you. Yeah. I just a do running that all dialogue. Day. Trust me. I'm yeah. talking to God all the time. Yeah. I'm sure he's <laughs> like, man, she's chatty, all the time, you know, <laughs> and it's important. And, 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 and that opens you up to know jesus right and that's the beauty of it is that when we can remove the forced religion that's forced upon people and the corporate religious aspects of our of our walk now we can get really get to know god when i got to you know that the the, the greatest part of being an author for me is all the nights of just staying up late at night getting in the word and trying to find things and answers to questions, and God just keeps revealing them. And there's no doubt in my mind, it's just because I'm God's like, okay, you're gonna sit here and when you want to get to know me, buckle up. Buckle <laughs> yeah, when up. you when you say <laughs> you're an open vessel and you want to know things, sometimes yeah. God makes you like, I mean, because my husband, even when I started the podcast, he's like, You're not gonna talk about flat earth, are you? Because you're gonna sound crazy, or you're not gonna talk about this or that. And I'm like, listen. I'm going to talk about whatever I think I should talk about. Cause I don't know what that is, but I'll know when I mm -hmm. get there, you know? And he always is like, Oh man. And like worrying, cause we still live in Utah, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm careful okay. who I share. I'm careful who I share with. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, yeah. The, I still have a family here. I still have many family members in church. I'm sure they think we've just lost it completely, but I mean, I know what God feels like. I know, I know the difference. I I've been there. But you know, you never know. And I'll, and I'll say this, you know, and this is the, again, it's just all God is that over time. So in, you know, I was in college, my best friends who he was Jewish. However, he was an atheist, right? He's raised, he's Jewish by heritage and raised in Jewish home and had a bar mitzvah and all that thing. But he was, Totally an atheist. The irony of this is that he was a religious studies major, but he was an atheist. <laughs> and so we used to argue and debate about God and the Bible and he everything. He 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 knew the Bible really well. He would challenge me. And we, you know, I loved it. So I mean, debating is like second nature to me. So I, I enjoy it. And we had so much fun doing that. But he, you know, graduated college and he was just didn't believe in God at all. Right. Mm -hmm. And so just a few months ago. He's calling me and calling me. I get like three calls from him and he's texting me saying, I got to speak to you. I got to speak to you. I got to speak to you. And he said, he goes, listen, he goes, I, the last three nights, he goes, I've done a deep dive on Nephilim, the Lunapi, Atlantis. And he goes, <laughs> and I'm reading all this stuff and I'm just Googling, Googling, Googling. And he goes, and your face pops up. <laughs> And he goes, I'm like, I'm like, wait a second. He's like, didn't Ryan write something? And so, and yeah. so, so it's like, that was the most, I was, that was the most receptive he was in that conversation to now talk about the Bible. Why did God do it? All the things that we used to talk about. Well, what about the wars <laughs> in Canaan? Why would God kill the, the babies? All these things yeah. he said to me in college. Now, you know, he has a full understanding of it and is hungry to know it. Yes. And so you just don't know who in your family, who in your community in Utah you're going to affect yeah. and, or, or who might be listening to you right now. And they're not even letting you know 
because yeah. they don't want anyone to know they're listening to you. Yeah. But, uh, because they're doing <laughs> you, it, you, know. you sprinkle those seeds, you never know where they're exactly. going to exactly. pop up. So, yeah. you know, God will give the growth, right? So just keep, just keep, keep serving and keep doing what you're doing. It's awesome. Right. <laughs> it's, it's scary, but you kind of have to just suck it up. Like, because I felt like it would have been such a hypocritical stance for me to pray to God to say, because it happened at this horrible time of my life. Like I was sick and yeah, it was yeah. 2020 and then mm -hmm. I lost my daughter. She didn't die, but she, she got married and she said like, um, she was like my best friend. And she said, yeah, I think I was abused. So bye. And I was like, what? Oh, wow. Like, wow. and her husband wow. just only met us three times and he just did not like us. And so they moved halfway across the country and I never saw her again. And it's been four years. And wow. it broke me. Like, I, I know you're not supposed to let things like do that because I still have all these other kids. I still have five kids and she's six. So I knew yeah, I yeah. still had to kind of keep it together, but I wasn't, I was so pitiful and like, I'm, I, I mean, that's okay for a little while, but then you have Absolutely. to, you have to, yeah, you have to start to say, okay, what is happening? Why is this happening? what is going on here? Like get outside of yourself. And it's hard. Like I miss her. I mean, of course, of course I yeah, mean, yeah, if I could yeah. fix it tomorrow, it's the prodigal son. If she knocks on my door, we're going to have a feast, but yes, I can't. Yeah. yeah. Like the forcing I did that. I'm very, uh, I'm like, you know, people are passive aggressive. I'm like aggressive, aggressive. <laughs> and so at first I tried to make it happen, but then I listened. I love Derek Prince. I listened to so much Derek mm -hmm. Prince. And sure. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he talks about like, you can't force it's, it's witchcraft. If you do that, it's not good. Mm -hmm. You have to not do that. It's not God's way. Boy, did I learn. I was like praying about like, help me Lord through this. And he did. But like, sometimes and when you ask for things, yeah, you're going to go yeah. down this weird road. And, and that's what happened. I, I had to learn how to get outside myself. And I kind of learned that maybe I made her more of an idol in my life and he doesn't like that. And I wasn't yeah. as close yeah. to God as I should have been. And you know how you said there's an order of things with God. And we know this, I know this more now, but at that time I was more like, almost like a baby Christian. I was a Christian for a long time, but I hadn't ever ever like given it my all or given it to God. And I, I just started delving into things and I'm like, wow, I really did my husband dirty kind of there. Like I was putting yeah. my kids above mm -hmm. and it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't good. It, it was bad. Yeah. And yeah. I learned some lessons like, and I mean, when you ask for help, sometimes what I'm saying is, or yeah. you go down the <laughs> rabbit hole, like your yeah. friends, yeah. sometimes you get this answer that you may not have expected you know mm -hmm. and same with your friend like and you never know when it will happen like you just have exactly. to trust god you have to like and that is so hard people say that all the time they say oh i trust god but do you though if you, if he took right. your child could you trust god you know he easy. didn't take her but if that happened to you yeah no i understand yeah and the only thing that got me through it i think was i just read job a whole bunch and i was like you know even though people always get to the part about Job being fully restored, they forget that his children all died in one day and they were smashed and he got more children later, but a child is never replaced. They're no, not the not same at all. Yep. He, not at all. He lost. He <clears throat> suffered. He, lost he had forever. permanent pain. He had permanent, yeah. permanent pain. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah. So, but no, you and, learn and he, how to he, pull he, out. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. Yep. And God, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, and but he trusted, right? As hard as that is, as hard as that, and that's unfortunately, you know, he he, it's, it's we benefit. Timing. It's yeah. sad. It's sad. <laughs> we benefit from that, right? Because yes. we get to look at him yes. and see, wow, wow, what a what an example, you know. Um, but yeah, and that's what. Back to your thing is that's full circle. Like people, your friend looking to you, like I'm looking yeah. to Job, like yeah. I've looked to you. Like, uh, that's the whole point. Like, I'm sure you're not doing this for fame and fortune. Like, that's not really the oh, point. No, no, the no, hours no. you've spent are not equal to <laughs> the hours. Yeah, it's not going to ever yeah. equal out. And I get that because no. I'm such a researcher. I mean, I lettered in debate. So I'm a huge when I said I'm a dork nerd. Nice. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> well, cause I mean, that was just always, I was going to go to law school. So I was, yeah. I was always, I did cross examination. I always wanted to do that. And did, that was my, I did see the debate yeah. too. <laughs> we might've so, been in some tournaments Yes. Together. Yeah. I mean, we, I traveled you know, all over the country. <laughs> oh, it, it was fun and I loved it. And I, I just, you know, I, I had a real passion, but then nursing got me cause I'm by nature a caregiver. And it's so a, it's a no, yep. very noble profession. So nothing, nothing <laughs> wrong with that. I love it. Yep. But, yeah. but the studying kind of went away because you get so busy with your family, you get really wrapped into yourself. We really forget about our fellow man. We really forget like that part I was saying about like having that constant dialogue with God, instead of saying, yeah. I'm going to pray for this guy later. Like you see some man walk past you and he's limping or something you, and you think I'm going to pray for that person. But instead of doing that later, when you're, you just do it right then and there, you just it, do exactly, it. Yeah. yeah. yeah it I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that, especially when you're speaking to people too. Yes. Like sometimes you just might be around somebody and they say, Hey, you know, yep. this is what's going on. Something happened to my child or my husband's sick. I just, I, I, I don't like to tell people I'm going to pray for you. Just yeah. pray for them just right there it. on the spot. Yep. Just get yep. it. Just why wait? Yeah. Yep. And, and I feel like that too. Now I, and my kids are always like, Oh, that lady at the store, you knew her. I'm like, no, I, I don't know her. <laughs> and he's like, that was weird then. And I'm like, why? I mean, she, he's like, yeah, she walked up to you and told you all this stuff. I'm like, well, then obviously that was what was supposed to happen. Like, right. I don't know. And he's like, why would you talk to like weird strangers. And I'm like, a lot of times they're not weird strangers. They just, I think God does something sometimes where he just puts people to you because he knows you will. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And, and, and if you think <laughs> about it too, again, in scripture, so many <laughs> meetings are random. Yeah. Right. It's not, it's you know, so right. True. It's very, there are lots of random encounters, like, but you know, God is ordering it, right. That God's telling someone go to this place but they don't even know who they're going to no. meet. Right. No. And so um, that's our it just example. Happens. Yeah. That's it just... our example. Right. We and... have to be out there, you know, you have to, and it's almost like, you know, and this is, this is the important part too. When you talk about being busy and with your children and the distractions of our day-to-day -day lives, which are all fine. Right. I love my children. I love spending time with my children. A big reason why I moved was because I knew I could be out of the New York city rat race and actually have a normal nine to five job and go to my children's practices and mm -hmm. do homework with them and all those things. So there's nothing wrong with that. However, we still as believers, as ambassadors of Christ, right? Again, but words have meaning. An ambassador is going out to strange lands to represent Christ to people, <laughs> right? And true. normally an ambassador is going out on an assignment that ambassador doesn't even know the people personally, right? They're just meeting. Right. Okay, you're going to go to Nigeria and go meet their prime minister, yep. right? You don't know that person. You're just, yeah. but you're you're being <laughs> sent. And so yes. we have to be out there, right? We have to be out in the community, wherever our community is, and be a light. And sometimes being a light is just being friendly. It's yeah. saying, yeah, I am going to have an, a five to 10 minute conversation with someone in line with me for coffee. Yeah, you know, because not? that's going to open the door <laughs> to sharing Christ with them and sharing the love and light of Christ with them. Well, and a smile is gone, gone away from many people because something happened in 2020 with the whole covering, with the whole six feet apart, which, by the way, is super occult in nature. If anybody wanted to know that it's a yeah, yeah. Gnostic mass, you stand six feet apart, but and you wear a face covering. But hey, whatever. And so they wanted to instill these things in us so that wouldn't happen as much, because if you go to other countries, I visited a lot of places, they always know who Americans are because they smile a lot. And they yeah. say that. And I'm like, how sad is that, that they want to condition us like other places and not have a friendly atmosphere where you can do that? Because no one's going to approach you if you got RBF. That's not happening. No, not at all. It's not happening. It's not, it's not happening. It's true. It's no, true. it's not. It's true. And I you mean... can see how, you know, so many people from being, you know, uh, confined quarantine whatever you want to call it right confined um mm -hmm. and and given these measures that were antisocial like right people malfunctioned right you see yep. all the 
the videos of people on planes absolutely acting insane right it's like Wild. that is not how we're made right we're not no. we're made to be communal we're made to be around each other we're made for fellowship and when we lose that people literally lose their minds i mean they the do. Of, i i work <laughs> mental health i'm like yes they exactly. do exactly no, i mean that airplanes was a horrible really year bad. airplane yeah. that's just one example but it's just easy because there's so many videos of just like you've never seen people acting like this before mm -mm. on planes and then i've been drinking right this is not a case of someone who's drunk mm -hmm. all right fine they're just, they're just yeah rolling on the floor these are people who are just 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 got on and yeah. they're screaming or fight, want to fight somebody or want to fight the flight attendants and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that's, so yeah, so a lot of it, so much, so much change. And then also the other thing too is it opened us up to so much influence because we're home and now we're really getting so much from our computers, right? We're oh, learning we're from our computers hundreds. and whoever happens to be on that screen, um, and that took people in so many directions, which and some are good, but there are so many bad ones, right? And, <laughs> and not having access to other live people and not having that same, it, that's you, you see the way people, you know, again, another way of kind of going crazy. Small, um, and people don't even understand that. And like, okay, if you have a baby and you put it in isolation, and this is actually true. Timothy McVeigh got sick when he was little and they had to isolate him from his family and everyone for like a period. I think it was like a month and no one could touch him. He got really, really sick. It was some autoimmune. I think I can't remember exactly, but I know it was a long period of time that no one could touch him. And and people have to have that. That is a necessity. Yes. And he was small. And so it like psychologically impacted him for the rest of his entire life. Like we see yeah. that. Yeah. And it's not just him. It's preemie babies. That's why they let the parents in now and make the little holes so you can stick your hand in and touch your yeah. baby. It's because they need it. It's so true. And God knows that. You know, I think of, as you said, that I just thought of the apostle Paul, you know, when he's on the road to Damascus, he gets blinded and he's told, wait here. And then of course, Jesus goes and tells Ananias, go to, go to Paul. And he's like, I don't want to go. He's like, this guy has been <laughs> killing Christians left and right. This dude is crazy. Why, why are you Yeah, no, me? I don't want to go why there. You go see this man. Like, you know, this, Could like, you, you know, imagine that assignment? <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh. Right. But Right. But that's really what he was, you know, he told to do. And of course Jesus said, you know, he's my servant. Right. I, I, you mind so he goes but the amazing thing is obviously it's amazing that he obeyed right because i can tell you so many of us would not do that so many of us not if someone was like <laughs> go to your enemy this person's oh. attacking your people the people who are closest to you and i want you to go and welcome him to the family of christ right we can't. Him. so one he obeyed <laughs> But the amazing thing is the first thing he says when he sees him, he says, brother soul, right? He gave him love, right? And so we right. need that. Because imagine how soul felt. Yeah, you know, alone and blind. Has great revelation. <laughs> he had this great revelation. And now I know who Jesus is. Jesus has spoken to me from heaven. I believe right. in Yeshua HaMashiach, right? However... None of these people like me. <laughs> he doesn't love yeah, me. I done yes, messed I know, up. But everyone else hates me, right? Like that's for sure. Like, like everyone else around me who loves Christ hates me, and they're scared of me. And at it at his weakest, right? Because he can't even see, right? Not, he could have actually come and slapped him, right? right? If he wanted to, right? This guy killed, you know, or ordered the death of apostles, and. He calls him could have took his moment. He could have took it. Yeah, right yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was like, this is for oh, Stephen. boy. Right? Yep. But he he calls him brother. And it's so <laughs> powerful for him to speak to him that it's like, you know what? You are my brother now. That level of, and that's, that's what, that's the power of God, right? That love of, who knows what that did? And so we're not told in scripture, but I have to think that warmed Saul's heart to hear that as he's sitting there blind in a room, just waiting for something to happen. And he's called brother. It's like Jesus, God saying, it's okay now. You're yeah. good now.
Like, you know, even with my people who are not here on earth, you're, you're, yep. you're a part of the family now. And so, and uh, that's we what can't... we all want. We all want that family, exactly. like unity, exactly. even people that are the hardest, like, and this is a funny story. I mean, I'm not Saul, but this, this was real for me. Like, okay. So my husband's ex-wife was very difficult for us both. And, and me and her, we just didn't jive on mostly kid raising. Um, and I get it now a lot better. But when that happened with my daughter, what I told you, very few people reach out. Most people uh, don't know what to do with that because it's not a death. So you get no help as far as like, oh, I'm so sorry. They literally just say, you are you must be a bad person because something you did. I mean, mm -hmm. they wouldn't do that. And they immediately judge you because it's a mom, you know, so it, sure. it, it's just yeah. the thing. And so the one person that actually called me, <laughs> his ex-wife, and <clears throat> We had had a CPS case with her years before, and I thought, oh, boy. And so she called, and her daughter said, my mom wants to talk to you. And I'm like, why? And she said, well, she just wants to see if you're okay. And I said, yeah, right. And she <laughs> she said, no, re really. And even though we have differing views, she's a Christian, and she, she is a good Christian, you know? And I, I got on the phone, and she said, can I pray for with you? And I thought. And I wow. said to her, yeah, right. And I said, you of all people right now should be gloating and say, ha ha, look, now I, now your kid's gone. Now this happened to you. Yeah. And I, I said that because I was still really a new Christian at that point. And she said, what kind of person would I be? And right. I just wow. thought, I don't know if that was reversed at that time. Now I would, but like at that time in my life, if I would have done the same and she did. Yeah. And it yeah. helped me. And, and even though we're not as close as we once were, I'll never forget that. I, I mean, ever. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. It was a yeah. gift. It was a gift. And, you know, Amen. like I said, it's, it does, you don't have to be their best friend forever. It might've just been that time or that thing or whatever you're supposed to do. Like the, the assignment you're supposed to go do. It, it doesn't have to be like, some people make it a lot bigger than it is. And it doesn't have to be, it just can be whatever it is supposed to be that day, you know, and you don't have to feel like, oh, now I have to be their best friend for the next 20 years of my life and this and that. And if that happens, great, but it may not be that we don't know. Right. They might've just needed yeah. you that day, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So don't, don't fear, you know, have, have yeah, less no, fear. No. I yeah, mean, yeah. at least we're not murderers. Most of us. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh boy. Could be worse. So, could be worse. It could, could be, be worse. worse. Yeah. So I, have, I know we've been on here for a hot minute, but I do have one yes. more question. Sure. On sure. people that are believers, a lot of times, even when I speak to them about the third of the angels going down mm -hmm. in Revelations um, 12, they oftentimes say that was never in the Bible. And I try and explain to them like about the stars and the verse in uh nine. So it's like 12, four through nine, kind of that mm -hmm. whole thing. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, that's not biblical. And I'm like, well, or revelations is just a dream or blah, blah, blah. And so I always want to ask somebody sure, yeah. like how to tell people more to how to understand this. Cause yeah, Sometimes so, I don't get through. <laughs> it's funny, you know, God is so good because I, I was actually thinking about this very question this morning. So I was listening to a sermon uh, on Revelation and I just was wanted to dig into Revelation 16. So you I knew I was coming all the time. <laughs> is that God yes. knew, God knew. <laughs> and in the sermon, the pastor reads, you know, he starts off the sermon. Uh, I love to start a sermon. Open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 16. And he just reads it, right? Which is to me, that's how you start. That's how you teach the Bible. You first start by actually reading it to the congregation. Yes. And But then he went out of his way to say, you know, all these things are just symbolic. Everything, the weather events, all these things. It's God expressing his will and what he wants to do to people. But it's just, you know, and he was stressing that don't take this literally. And I thought to myself, I said, okay, well, you know, again, you know, kind of coming full circle with how we started this conversation about typology and repetition. 
I don't know any 99% of churches I know and pastors will, when they teach the Exodus, they teach it as a literal event. This really happened. There was a real kingdom called Egypt. The Israelites were really enslaved there. God really sent supernatural plagues to force and bring Pharaoh to his knees to let the Israelites go and culminating with the parting of the Red Sea. Well, guess what? Revelation's all the same plagues. It's water turning to blood. There are locusts. There is darkness. There are sores on people's body. All the same things we've seen, we're seeing happening in Exodus, right? Are happening again in Revelation. Furthermore, we know in Exodus chapter 10, God specifically said to Moses, I'm not, I'm going to judge Egypt and her gods. So this wasn't just a judgment of Pharaoh and this wicked nation. It was a judgment also of the fallen angels who are ruling over this, the most powerful civilization on earth, which also happened to be the most advanced civilization on earth at that time. Shocker, because they were constantly in communion with the fallen angelic realm, right? And their leader has a serpent coming out of his forehead, right? Mm -hmm. On his, his crown. So this is a satanic society. What are we going to see in the end times? We're going to see the seed of Satan sitting on the throne, trying to rule the earth. And God's going to do the exact same thing. So if it was literal then, why wouldn't it be literal now, right? Yeah. That is yeah. all, it's all the exact same things happening again, right? To the, to, to the extent that in Revelation, when you get to 17 and 18, Mystery Babylon says that it's it, the great city, also known as Egypt, right? So, it's, it's, so, so again, God even calls it Egypt in the book of Revelation, right? So, so what are we talking about here? So for a Christian, I would say, you know, we have to, we don't really have the right to just take an entire book of God specifically <laughs> saying he's going to do this and he will do this and just say that none of this is literal, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when God speaks with such specificity, he is going to seal 144,000 witnesses, right? The locusts that come emerge from the abyss in Revelation chapter nine, at the fifth trumpet, they torment the unbelieving world who don't have the seal of God in their foreheads for five months. It's a very specific time by five months well there's a reason but god's speaking very these are very right. specific details the mark of the beast right which is connected to another number 666 it's mm -hmm. only in your right hand or your forehead the the two witnesses preach for three and a half years they're killed it's that their body their slain bodies the world rejoices over their slain bodies for three and a half days i mean this is god is speaking with great very. specificity and not not only do we not have a right to say, oh, that's just all symbolic. Yeah. It's all allegory. We're also denying the power of scripture. Where are you? There's no other book in any religion that's going to have prophecy with that level of specificity. That is an incredible level of specificity that God, that the Bible's giving you in Revelation over and over and over again. So rather than try to write these things off as being allegories and not being real let's embrace it and learn and challenge ourselves and i understand because churches don't like to teach in revelation yeah, or they want to gloss don't. over it. <laughs> um, but we have to challenge <laughs> ourselves so i see genesis you know, I too they want to the skip a lot like, of that one. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah exactly yeah. exactly so you know I, I always compare our walk in the faith to exercise i played sports all my life i love going to the gym i love to work out and so it's like if you are trying to compete in athletics or you're trying to work out and get in shape or whatever your goals are, if you go to the gym and you're not tired after you're done for an hour, you're probably not working out hard enough, right? If you're challenging yourself, whether it doesn't matter what you're doing, you could be lifting weights, you could be walking the treadmill, you could be doing Pilates, whatever. You have to challenge your body to make your body stronger. It's the same thing with your faith. And if you're studying the Bible and you're not questioning what you've thought for the last 30, 40 years of your life, you're not thinking, wait a second, I think there's something new I'm seeing here. You need to study more and you need to study harder. I'm constantly questioning myself. I'm constantly going back and looking at passages because as you get deeper, we can't, there's, we will never know everything until we're in eternity. There's so much knowledge in the Bible. So we have to challenge ourselves. And I think in Revelation, it's like the ultimate challenge for believers because it's so mysterious and so confusing on its face. 
The last thing I'll say about the third of the angels in Revelation 12 is remember, we are told Jesus said that hell itself was prepared for the devil and his angels, which means he has a faction of angels that God himself, God Yeshua says are his. So it's no surprise that in Revelation 12, what do we see? We see them being expelled finally out of heaven for good, right? Because we know from Job and from other passages that, that, that Satan still goes to heaven. Satan can still mm -hmm. speak to God before his throne. So we really should take that seriously because one, we know the devil actually has angels that are loyal to him. Two, the passage of Revelation 12, I think is describing a literal future event when they're going to be evicted. But also there's a, there's a very dire warning in that passage and this is and i would challenge anybody just read the end of revelation 12 if you think it's not literal where it says woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the devil has come upon you having great wrath for he knoweth his time is short it's saying you guys are in big trouble <laughs> yes it is the devil is coming directly to you and he's not leaving he's now he's stuck on earth so why would god put that there what, yeah. what sense would that possibly make to say inhabitants of the earth is literally 8 billion people. You're all, yeah. he's saying y'all are in big trouble. Why would God say that unless it was actually something that's going to come to pass? And so we have to just, you know, it can be overwhelming. It can seem very complicated, but fortunately there's so many resources out there. You're not alone. There's so many great resources to understand revelation. There's so many great mm -hmm. commentaries, great books, you know, um, Reach out to me, question me, yes. send me a question. I'm happy. To, I write people all the time. I write, I, I, I write long email responses to people <laughs> all, all the time, uh, all the time. Good. So, Amazing. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So we got to embrace it. Yes. Yes. I do believe Revelation 12 is absolutely literal as are the judgments and God has shown us this before. So I, I believe that as well. And I think it's funny that people are so um, wishy-washy about the hierarchy of things. And I'm like, you, if you would look at those books and I'm not saying, okay, go study uh, all the demonic books. Like, I mean, some of them are really scary, but there, there is a certain, they are very regimented. Like this is over this, this is over that, this is over this. He has this many under him, that many under them. It isn't like, oh, well, I don't know. And it's going to be this and this it's, it's not like that. God is very specific. They're very, everything is really specific. And so I'm like, the, who made this up then? If you don't think any of this is real, then, uh, you know, or the lesser keys of Solomon, like if you don't think any of this stuff is real, then where did they come up with it? Cause this is some crazy, like perfect number stuff. And it's not like every one of them's the same. They're all different. They're all just like their own thing. And I don't know why people have it makes a you time. wonder if God, the, God, the father is really consumed with numbers mm -hmm. and would, you know, maybe make a book called numbers where he's arranging Israel in a certain <laughs> location, a certain tribe has to stand on the East at the, facing North, facing South, facing West, with certain numbers in a certain order with a certain role with signed think... a certain standard with a certain animal on it. Yeah. It's, so this is all, and, and remember, God told Moses, everything you're doing when you do the tabernacle and arrange Israel, just, you're doing it based on what I'm showing you in heaven. It's just a reflection. When you said, as above, so below, the enemy is just taking that from God, right? Mm -hmm. and the tabernacle is a reflection of what Moses saw in heaven. The, or, the organization of the tribes, and they're literally marching and in their camp, is yeah. all based on what, you know, it's it's like, you know, it's almost like... um. You know, you have the fourth dimension in the spirit realm, right? Your and the lo the lesser realm is the shadow of the greater realm, right? Your shadow is a two dimensional image of yourself because you are a three dimensional being. The tabernacle and everything Moses was doing was the shadow of the heavenly tabernacle, right? So, because he's doing this in three dimensions, so so even that, so God is clearly uh, there is a clear numerical order and numbers have super significance to god so it's no surprise that the angels good and bad follow that same pattern they care about do everything according to to numerics to strict numerical arrangement and organization so 
It's all wow. it's all there in the Bible, right? And, and so when we so in understanding how the enemy yeah. uses that is valuable. Right. Right. We Any, should know how the enemy is using this. Anything that that they go after, it means something. It's important. And so even people that were greatly deceived, like John D, I mean, he loved yeah. God. He tried really hard. He just went too far because he was obsessed. He he had something. And at the point where he went into wife swapping, he should have understood that this was no longer uh, a good idea. Okay. He knew God, he knew God's works, but he even said as a mathematician, which is what he's mostly known for, because most people throw this esoteric stuff out and you very rarely hear about him because Crowley stole all of it. And that's yep. who you hear about. But he yep. spoke and said, God's language is mathematics. And he was a mathematician and he understood the importance of like days and numbers and things. And I'm like, this is all important. And that is why they are so obsessed with specific numbers, gematria, all this stuff means exactly. something. Yeah. And it's just, it's just the danger of, you know, he was a brilliant mind, right? It's like Solomon, right? Mm -hmm. he, he had the most brilliant mind of a full, of just a pure human person, not obviously Jesus. And what he got into every occult practice possible. In addition yeah. to the wife swapping and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, that so. got real far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but right. But he explored everything in the occult and like went, you know, was a total, you know, idolater. Yeah. And so that's, that's the danger, but we still have to, you know, we still have to have discernment and look into these things, right? Like the Bible, right. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Like, and maybe people will say this to me when I do my documentary, because like I said, my doc, my first documentary is just, based on the Bible, what's it teaching us about the Nephilim, what's it teaching us about the end times. But here I'm showing people things. And I, and I, I showed uh, clips of this at when I was in Norman, Oklahoma at the prophecy watchers conference. And a lot of things I'm showing people are very disturbing. And they're saying, some people say, why are you, you know, what, why are you putting this? And I said, because this is what your kids are watching. <laughs> so these are nothing I'm showing is R rated. There's nothing right. I actually show that's an R rated made for adult. This is all content made for young adults and teens. So they they have easy access. They're watching it. They know it. And yet they're talking about Satan having a, uh, a child impregnating a woman. And it says a Nephilim was born. I'm playing this clip where it says mm -hmm. a Nephilim was born, who is the offspring of Lucifer. And they explain yeah. this and they say it's that it's the uh, son it's the half a uh, hybrid son of a fallen angel and a human. They're explaining it mm -hmm. just like it, the reality. And so. But part of what we have to do, right, e Ephesians 511, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but reprove them, expose them. Yes. So we're supposed to know these things and expose them. We're supposed to understand how the enemy is using numbers, understand how the enemy is using Genesis 6, how the enemy is using the accounts of fallen angels to create new religions and, and expose them. So 100% on that. And, that. and that's a command, by the way. It's not, yeah. it wasn't, that isn't said in the Bible as an option. It's right. a command. So right. we have to be wise, you know, wise. Exactly. Wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. We, ha we have to Amen. be on Amen. that same level. If you put yourself underneath the level of these things, which I believe, I don't know how you, I, I believe the diamond ions, how demonions, I'm not sure how you say that exactly, but mm -hmm. yeah, they yeah. are here. They're here. Yes. They know you. They're here to torture you. They're here to still kill, destroy, uh, make every man a liar. You, you really have to understand some things, not only about yourself, <laughs> like know yourself, know thyself is important because that's where you will know and identify what is your fall. That's where yes. you'll make sure you put on that armor when you're going Amen. into battle, who's going into Amen. battle without their armor on or knowing right. you play sports. This is what I always tell people. If you're going to go and play a football team, the coach runs the plays from the other team. You watch them. Exactly. So exactly. why aren't we watching? Exactly. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You're, you're absolutely right. And that's a wonderful analogy. And it's so important. And, and you never know when you're going to need it. Like, you know, my wife, um, when we met, she was deep into the new age. And, you know, into all sorts of new age practices, she had, um, 
past life regression, out of body experience, all these things going on. And that, and, but, but by God's grace, at the time she met me, I was probably a year and a half to two years into just researching all these things. And I wasn't researching for a book. I'm just researching right. new world order, Illuminati. You Alistair were like Proud, me, Lomofsky. you fell down the rabbit but hole. <laughs> I was so, I was so, it was so <laughs> easy for me to explain these things to the point that, you know, when I remember we went to her father's house. I met her father for the first time, right on his bookshelf. He had a book by Helena Blavatsky. And so I explained to her who she was and how this all goes back to the devil, how it's not just peace and love and ascension and transcendence. It all goes back to Lucifer. And so, but God put her in my life at that time when I was equipped Right. Because prior to that, I knew that if she, I, prior to that, I knew the Bible for sure. Right. But I didn't know the enemy's devices. It, but mm -hmm. God just sent me down some websites and rabbit holes and blogs yep. where I just started understanding what's going on out there. And um, so you could pull her out, you know, because she may right? not have exactly. listened to you if you didn't know. I mean, she's just going to blow you off like uh, whatever. You don't know what you're talking about, but you did know. I and did so know. And it there was it easy. It was so easy for me to explain because I was yes. really, really in season and understanding who these people truly are. Like, well, that was Crowley. given to you for a reason. Obviously, like that exactly. knowledge was exactly. imparted on you so that you could help her. You know, it yep. all makes sense, even though people say, why do you waste your time on this? Or that's silly or whatever. And to know? the point that also, glory to God, that uh, her mom is a Christian now, too. Awesome. And she was also in the new age and now she's a Christian. She's a believer. Yeah. We were just studying the, she was just here uh, about a week and a half ago and we were studying, uh, we actually did a Bible study together. Yes. That's, um, yeah. that's so, amazing. You, so, so God, so that's the power of understanding these things and exposing them. Yes. Cause you never know who you're going to save. Like your friend, it's been how long and he never cared before, but like now he cares and exactly, you, you know, you'll and, be able and, to do that. And the paranormal, we're, we're in an era now where spirituality has become so common. You know, I came, I come from the corporate, the most corporate of corporate <laughs> environments, right? I was yes. working on Wall Street. And I can tell you back when I started, when I graduated law school, you would never see somebody who's a lawyer or working in finance with a necklace with like an energy crystal on it. No way. No. Now no. you will. Yeah. Now you, there are people walking around Goldman Sachs right now with their little crystals on and their energy crystal, you know, <laughs> yep. where that was very, but it's become so common or they're taking ayahuasca trips and all those things. And so it's spirituality is becoming very common. And so being able to discuss these things, discuss supernatural, the paranormal, right? Think about people like, again, like even, you know, there, when I go to conferences, I can't, you know, I say this about LA Marzulli all the time. The amount of people who said, who said to me at conferences who comes say, hey, how are you doing? And they say, hey, I was into, you know, something in the supernatural. I was into the new age. I was into Sufism. And I started learning about aliens. And then I stumbled upon L.A. Marzulli. Mm -hmm. Then it all clicked. And this goes back <laughs> to the Bible, right? Josh yeah. Peck, who's had a phenomenal career, right? And he, his whole salvation journey started by LA talking about aliens and how it connects okay. to the Bible. And so there's so much that we have out there that we can use as our witness by engaging on these topics. So we have to keep doing it. So absolutely. I'm, I'm glad you're in the fight too. Um, I'm <laughs> here. You Do yes. you think um, that the alien movement is actually fallen angels? Oh yeah, of course. Me yeah, too. absolutely. Yeah. I think they're fallen angels. Um, and I think that they will be a part of ironically I really think they're going to be part of Revelation yeah. 12. Oh, yeah. And I think right? AI think as it, well. Right? The devil yeah. and his angels are going to come to <laughs> Earth, right? And so uh, in, the, in the final Nephilim, I talk about this amazing quote from Hippolytus, right, in 202 AD, where he talks about that exact passage. That is a literal passage, right? This is a <laughs> this is going back 2,000 years, and we have a church yep. father saying, yes, this is literal. But not only does he say it's literal, he says... He describes it, the angels coming to earth, the fallen angels coming to earth. He says they're going to be bathed in beautiful light, singing hymns, floating above the ground, and the Antichrist is going to be with them. 
and how they're going to point to the, he, he, he describes them as being beautiful, yeah. as being amazing, glorious, wonderful beings. Angel of light, the beings, whole right? thing. Yep. Angel of light. Or they could just say they're from another planet and we're here yep. to save you. We're here to rescue you. You're our children. Yep. He seeded you 7,000 years ago. And now we're back to, yep. you know, help you transcend to your next stage of evolution. Right. So I do think, I do think they're fallen angels, the aliens. And I do think they, they'll actually be a part of the end time scenario. That's how I feel as well. I feel like yep. they're just um, in waiting. And I oftentimes, even though I'm super grateful for technology, I always think back of the black mirror that John D used. And I always look at my phone when it's not uh, active and it's got that black shiny screen and it's mm -hmm. liquid crystal display, liquid yeah. crystal obsidian is what mm -hmm. they used for that scrying mirror. And I just think, you know, we've got to be careful. There's a fine line between using something for what you need to use it for, for God. And because this is all fallen angel technology all of it yeah. people want to focus on makeup but i'm like we got a whole lot more problems than some makeup <laughs> like i mean i get it but like you, are you gonna stop using everything because if you are it's like everything and you can't own a house because also yeah. that's prideful so i'm like right. you, you you don't understand fully like people want to say that but i'm like you don't really understand what that means and and i think it's valuable i think you need to understand it like any like anything i think that you know knowledge is power period i mean yes yeah but yeah i'm with you i think that it's gonna it's gonna be like the whole ai thing like the whole internet like i, I always think like what's on the other side of that anyways that's giving us all this information because it's not it's not what they tell us i know that much oh, uh, no. and, and, and ultimately it's it, <laughs> it's it's the ultimate way to control, right? The Antichrist needs technology. Satan is not God, right? The Antichrist is not God. He's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. He's not omnipotent, right? So he needs technology, He's right? We see it, right? Yep. The mark of the beast is technology, mm -hmm. right? Whatever it is, whether it's an actual chip, whether it's a tattoo, whatever it is, it's technology, right? You're buying and selling, it's, te it's technology. The image of the beast is technology. And what is it? It's it's AI, right? The, right? The, the, the false prophet says that he causes the people to make an image. So it's something that is made. It's artificial, but it says, but then it, it's given life. So it's actually alive, right? So it is the culmination of AI, right? It's every worst sci-fi nightmare. But then it goes even further. Because when you again in, in in Revelation 13, it says that the image, and by the way, why do they even make the image? Right? I think they need the image again because the Antichrist can't be everywhere at once, right? He's he's running a world government, he's fighting wars, but he, he doesn't have time to sit around. So, so he has to create, use technology to create an image of himself so people can constantly worship him every day while he's actually out running his satanic government and so but the amazing thing that's not often discussed is that it says that the image has the power to put to death anyone who's not worshiping the antichrist so it's going to know if for every person on the planet whether or not you are worshiping how can that be done right obviously only through an internet connection and some link to your mind, you know, say a neural link, yep. right? So, right, right. it's going to be accessing your very mind. Yeah. I believe it's going to be, mm -hmm. ultimately, I believe the image of the beast is going to access the minds of people. And how else worship is here. Worship right. is here, right? And so it's, but it's going to know that 24 seven. And we're going to know you have to choose. It will be, a, oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. it won't oh, be yeah. an accident. Yep, no, no, there's no know. accident. No one's slipping you anything. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be presented <laughs> as a medicine. It's going to be an absolute, you're pledging your allegiance to mm -hmm. the Antichrist and to the devil openly, yes. right? Yes. And so, but yeah, but technology is going to be so key to that. And, and ultimately, yes. I think the culmination of AI is the image of the beast. So yeah, I couldn't agree more.
Yep. I agree. We're in for a ride and it's been, <laughs> yeah. it's been an interesting few years. Let me tell yes. you, it's, yes. it's gotten wild. And I think we can all see the writing on the wall. We just have to, mm -hmm. no one knows the time or place, but we no, just absolutely. have to always yeah, watch and be prepared. Like if you're mm -hmm. always prepared and you always watch you really don't have anything to really worry about. Just develop your relationship with God and keep it there. That's it and enrich it and feed it and if you do all those things really this isn't as scary as one might think no. i mean it is but it isn't we're not supposed to worry we're not supposed to no no you know, not birds at all. don't not at all. yeah <laughs> just skip to the end because if you're worried go to chapter 19 to the end you'll find out yep. spoiler alert yep. jesus spoiler wins, alert so. <laughs> yes. well i appreciate this would you like to close us out in a prayer do you ever absolutely do that? i would love all to right. yeah i would pray. love that Sure. Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, for this time. Thank you, God, for such a time as this, Lord, that you have blessed Heidi, you've blessed myself, you've given us this privilege and honor to be able to go to use technology for good, to use technology for your glory, to use technology for your word, to share it. And we don't know who and what countries, whether it could be Zimbabwe, whether it's India, whether it's Ireland, there are people all over who can hear this or it could be right down the street from us in Utah or in Texas who are hearing your word, Lord. And I, we pray, I pray, God, for you this, this episode to bless all the people who are listening to this, who are under the sound of our voices, Lord. I pray that you bless them with your truth, with your love. And if they don't know you, if they don't trust you yet, I pray that this has moved them. Uh, to believe, to see that everything that's happening in the world was written by you, God. In 96 AD, the Apostle John was predicting this technology that's only been available in the past decade. He wrote it in the first century, Lord, because he was given divine inspiration from you, Lord. And I pray that people will believe your word. They will trust in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for their sins to take their punishment and believe upon you, Lord. And that this will just be a blessing to just everyone who hears it it will be and if it's not for salvation there will be a little bit of water on that seed to give them more growth to bring them closer to you in your time father and i thank you for heidi lord i thank you for the amazing story for the amazing path and journey and mission you've given her bless her strengthen her keep her close to you protect her and her family from the enemy from the darts of the of the adversary lord um, and keep her strong in the faith in this walk, Lord, because once you step out and put your name in the airwaves, Lord, we know the enemy is going to come after her, after me, and after our families and loved ones, well, Lord. So continue to bless her and enrich her and let us have many, many more programs for years to come until you come, God. We ask for all this in the mighty, precious, and most glorious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. And will you remind our guests where they can find you and all your work again? So that yes, they can absolutely. come in here. So uh, my, my website is judgmentofthenephilim.com, one word, and you can find the books there. My documentaries, the study guide, it's all there. Um, additionally, my Facebook, my Instagram, and my YouTube channel are all Judgment of the Nephilim, one word. And also, I never mentioned this, but my, my documentaries are available also on Vimeo. And my channel there is Judgment of the Nephilim. You can find the documentaries there. Um, as well, but I have lots of great free content on my YouTube channel as well. There's lots of this two seven part series, of the Nephilim, my Thursday night theology show I did for most of the last year and a half or so. Um, there's lots of great content out there. So feel free to reach out to me if you have questions, especially if you have questions about revelation being literal, email me. I'm happy to talk to you about it. Amazing. Well, I appreciate all your work and your heart and everything that you've just given it over and let it go and really gone through and put it put it to work. So I know that it helps people and I know it's helped me. So I Praise appreciate that. Thanks Thank you so much. On, God bless Thank you. you. Have a good night. Yeah.